Welcome everyone, they call me Intratechout and ever since I released my advanced FPS template, people have been asking me how to do multiple weapons. Matter of fact, I even asked myself that question when I started work on what I call my ultimate FPS character, which isn't remixable as of now. Uh, eventually I figured it out and the result is quite cool in my opinion. There is however a good reason why I don't and won't include this feature in my FPS template and that is that weapon swapping increases the complexity of the whole thing by multiple factors. I want my templates to be as accessible and customizable as possible and weapon swapping deals a significant blow to both of those pillars. But that doesn't stop me from doing a tutorial to explain how you can add weapon swapping to my specific template. Now while this sounds easy to do, just add another weapon, it's not easy at all. I hope to guide you through the steps with this video, but if you're completely unexperienced with the logic in dreams, I guarantee you're going to run into problems that you won't know how to solve. But time to start logicking. Let's place a new microchip in the FPS template and add a node. A node just transfers a signal, nothing special about it, it's mainly handy for organizing. Wire the triangle button from the controller sensor into it so we always have it available in our weapon swap microchip. Next place an end gate and a timeline and set the timeline to play once. Wire the triangle button into the end gate and the end gate into the timeline. In the timeline we'll soon add the weapon swap animation. The end gate is there to allow us to define some conditions that have to be met to allow the weapon swap to happen. We can use this to make sure you can swap weapons while reloading for example. In the meanwhile we can connect a NOT gate to the second port. Before we start adding the multiple weapon logic, weapon swapping can work in multiple ways. You can for example have a carry limit of 2 where you can switch between two weapons on every button press. There are multiple variations on this. You can do it like Halo where you can carry any type of weapon in both slots but not two of the same ones if they could theoretically share ammo. You can do it like Battlefield or many other modern shooters where one of your weapon slots is reserved for a light weapon like a pistol and the other one is reserved for a medium sized weapon like a rifle or shotgun. Or you can do it like Rainbow Six Siege where you once again have a light and medium weapon but you can't pick up dropped weapons from enemies or teammates. A whole other way of doing weapon swapping is allowing you to carry many more weapons, in which case you won't use a single swap button. These are games like Borderlands where you can assign a weapon to every d-pad button or Doom where you have a weapon wheel with every gun in the game available. This video I'll just keep it simple. I'm just going into weapon swapping Rainbow Six Siege style, so no weapon pickups. The reason is that I find weapon pickups really hard to do so far. I succeeded with my ultimate FPS character, which you can test yourself in my dream FPS comedy arena, but for the logic cost of having 4 weapons that you can swap and pick up and switch out, I could have probably made double the amount of weapons. At the end of the video I'll show how you can do 4 weapons with the d-pad though. Now then, let's add a selector behind the end gate. By wiring the end gate into its forward port, the selector will now switch between the two outputs every time you press the weapon swap button. Behind the first port we'll add a microchip that will contain the first weapon, a rifle. In this microchip we'll first add another node, which will connect to the first port of the connector. If at any point during this video you see me changing the icons and colors of the microchips and nodes, that's just to give me a better overview in the future. Another bit of theory before we do the logic itself so you understand what we're doing exactly. The main reason why doing multiple weapons in my FPS template is so cumbersome is because the thing has so many weapon specific settings and animations. If you intend to use every mechanic, every weapon needs to have a different melee animation, a different arm position, different reload animation, different muzzle flash position, different ADS animation, different ADS recoil animation, different slide animation, different fire rate, different sound effects, different ammo count, etc. Now all of this is doable, it's just time consuming and difficult. Especially aimed on sites is time consuming, which is why my ultimate FPS character takes most inspiration from Halo, which doesn't have ADS. I'm more of a fan of arena type shooters anyway, so it's a win-win for me. But if you're going the Call of Duty route, understand that it will take a lot more fine tuning. Most of the stuff I mentioned earlier we can do with one keyframe though, so let's do that. Like I said, the first weapon will be a rifle. I'm going to remove the one included with the template so you can see how to do this with a new gun. Take something from the Dreamiverse and scope it into the right hand after some optimization of the new model by using the Sculpture Detail tool and X-Ray mode, which allows you to see all the logic regardless of which group it's in. Checking guns from the Dreamiverse for hidden logic and lights is always a good idea. The right hand group, by the way, is one group lower than where the old gun resides. After positioning the new gun, delete the old one. When everything looks good, add a keyframe in the rifle microchip. 
In this keyframe, we decide upon the characteristics of the new weapon. We can do this by, for example, toggling the buttons included with the template and tweaking camera shake and kickback. I don't want the player to have the ability to change firing modes on this weapon, so let's make it permanent full auto. I also want the fire rate to be slightly lower, which can help prevent game slowdown, so let's decrease the speed of the timelines in the shooting slash recoil slash ammo microchip. Last, we also need to change the place where the muzzle flash is emitted. Tweak the emitter located somewhere next to the gun in that group and reposition the muzzle flash so it is correct. This might require some testing until you get it right. And note that obnoxious green flashing wasn't there in the early access version of Dreams, but we have to deal with it now. Now we need to make a new keyframe that will handle the position of the hands. Here's where exclusive gates come in handy. Exclusive gates are really handy gadgets in Dreams. With an exclusive gate you can make sure only one thing is active at a time no matter where in the level something is. When dealing with a puppet with a lot of different animations, exclusive gates can be a really handy way to ensure there are never two keyframes overriding each other. For my FPS stuff I usually have three gates. One is named arm position, one is named hand position and one is named finger position. The arm position one will handle the animation on arm group level, so I basically use this to rotate or move both arms plus the gun at the same time. Hand position handles animations at hand level, this one keeps the hands and individual arm parts at the location where they're supposed to be. As you may have guessed, finger position handles the animations at finger level. This one makes sure the hands actually grab the gun correctly. These were all made separate to allow for maximum animation flexibility. Right now we want the puppet to grab the gun correctly, so we'll use the hand position and finger position exclusive gates. Let's start with the hands. We need to add the relevant exclusive gates and enable override to allow us to temporarily deactivate them remotely when using a melee animation for example. Now add a keyframe behind the exclusive gate and start repositioning the hands. Keep in mind that you will need to include all other arm parts in the animation including the shoulders for which you will need to disable preview invisibility so the arms won't glitch out in play mode. You can do this by shortly tapping L2 on these body parts. Now that's in place connect it to the exclusive gate. We now need to repeat the process for the finger position. Once again include all movable parts in the group in the animation using L2. The basic setup is now done, except that we need to make the gun invisible when it's not currently selected. I'd recommend making the gun invisible by default and then using the general tweaks keyframe to make it visible again. Always keep an eye on text displayers, because they won't be made invisible when you make their group invisible. You have to manually turn them off and then once again use a keyframe to turn them on. For the gunshots we can use the two types included in the template. Place an end gate in the rifle microchip and wire the node into one of the ports and the fire output into the other. You can find it in the shooting recoil ammo microchip. To allow us to use that shot fire node for the other gun, it might be handy to also run it through a node first. Now we can use the end gate to activate the standard gunshot. Of course we also need to delete the old wire. I also haven't touched upon ammo yet, which is also different for both guns and adds another layer of complexity. The way I originally did ammo in my FPS template is a bit unnecessarily complicated, so I suggest we remove the logic and redo the ammo. For this we need to delete the ammo counter in the shooting recoil ammo microchip along with the white microchip and the ammo counter in the heads of display chip. We can do the ammo by creating a new microchip that we add a counter to. It will be connected with the new end gate. The new microchip should be activated by the main node in the rifle chip. When the counter is full we should activate the new keyframe which we will call can't shoot. This is a keyframe that will be used a lot so let's also give it a distinct color so we can always immediately recognize it. While animating this keyframe, just switch off the can shoot switch in the first microchip of the template. Now when the counter is full, the ability to shoot will be disabled, as long as this gun is active. For the heads up display, take the already existing ammo count number displayer and move it into the ammo microchip. To display the right amount of ammo, we first need to decide on the amount of ammo, I'll go with 40 for now. This means I need to increase the counter to 40. Next we'll place a calculator behind the counter. The type of calculator should be minus and in the top row we'll put 40. Now wire the current count output of the counter into the row below it, which is still 0. The output of the calculator will now be 40 minus whatever the counter currently is. See how it now displays the right amount of ammo. After shooting 5 times, the calculator will remove 5 from 40, resulting in 35 bullets. We can now wire the output of the calculator into the number displayer and voila, we have the right amount of ammo. 
For reloading, we can just wire the activation of the reload animation into the reset of the counter. Also important is to add a calculator set to equal behind the ammo counter and connect it to a NUT gate. The NUT gate should be connected to the end gate in the reload microchip to prevent reloading from being possible when your gun is still full of ammo. Of course you can do things like making the number displayer red when you need to reload and adding a click sound when trying to shoot while empty, but I don't want to make this video any longer than it needs to be, which is already quite long. So for the rifle then. At this point we can copy the whole rifle microchip. Next we'll make a pistol. Delete all the keyframes except the can't shoot one, rewire the shot fired output into the end gate and do the whole process all over again. First we choose a pistol and scope it into the right hand and move it until it looks right. At this point I recommend using the high tool to make the rifle temporarily invisible so it doesn't obstruct your view constantly. Next we will once again make a keyframe that handles all the weapon characteristics. This time we'll set it to single shot. Next do the hand position, finger position, muzzle flash position, ammo and gunshot. The gunshot this time can be the old one I made, which is also located in the sound microchip. Don't forget to turn the microchip on first. You also of course need to make the pistol invisible by default only to make it visible with the characteristics keyframe. That should be it. Let's test it. Was that? You thought we were done? This is only the beginning. We now need to create the actual weapon swap animation. Let's make one in the timeline we put down at the beginning of this video. This one will be really easy, just place a keyframe and rotate the whole arm group down. Now make it a bit longer and add some slow power up and slow power down. While activating this we also want an arm position exclusive gate to stay open, so this weapon swap animation won't merge with any future arm group animations. We can do this by adding a NUT gate to the timeline, which should be as long as the keyframe itself, and wiring it into the exclusive gate. Now we have a proper weapon swap animation. I also recommend adding a nice whoosh during the animation, sound effects are really important after all. I'm sure you know how to do this, so I'm not going to do it here. Let's test again. Well, 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 it almost works now. Oh, of course it doesn't. Let's first make sure you can't shoot while swapping weapons. Remember the can't shoot keyframe? Now would be a good time to add it to the timeline. Now even though we theoretically shouldn't be able to shoot while weapon swapping, it can still happen if you keep the trigger of a fully automatic weapon held while weapon swapping. No matter what I've tried, this keeps happening and this is just a dreams bug we'll have to deal with I'm afraid. Now have you noticed that while swapping weapons, you can immediately see the other one appear even though the animation has barely begun? This is why nodes can be really handy to use. If we had wired the ports of the selector into all that logic without using a node, we'd have to do a lot of stuff over again right now, but luckily we thought ahead, right? What we want right now is for the rifle and pistol to not immediately activate and deactivate when swapping weapons. There are probably some fancy ways to do this, but I'm just going to use a timer set to positional that has its timer output wired into the playhead of a timeline with a NUT gate taking up half of it. First we need to copy the earlier mentioned node though and move the triangle button to the first one. In between we will place the timer and timeline. The first node needs to be connected to the timer and the NUT gate in the timeline to the second node. Now it takes some time before the weapon gets activated and it also takes some time before it gets deactivated. Crucial is to tweak the timer so the swap happens when the gun is out of sight. Copy the same logic to the pistol and it should work now. Do keep in mind it will now also take a short while before the main gun pops into position. That's why it can be a good idea to either clone the weapon swap animation and let it play once when you spawn, or to manually complete the timer so everything works immediately. Another test. Does it finally work? Yes! But what happens when we aim down sights? Well, the same thing when you use melee or when you reload if you've assigned animations to those. It will only play the animation for one weapon. You understand now why multiple weapons can be such a time-consuming process? 
I'll not show how to do multiple ADS animations right now because it takes a lot of fine tuning. I will however show how to do multiple melee animations and you can use the exact same technique for ADS and ADS recall animations along with reload animations. We first need to delete the keyframe present in the timeline of the melee animation. On this timeline we'll place a new keyframe and we'll animate the melee animation for the rifle. I'll do this in the hand position group so we'll also need to activate a hand position exclusive gate while playing the animation. This keyframe then should have some slow power down, but slow power up really isn't necessary. It will make the melee seem really quick and snappy. Next we should duplicate this keyframe and make an animation for the pistol melee. Nothing is stopping you from using multiple keyframes for a more advanced animation by the way. With both finished it will of course try to play both at the same time if we press melee, so it's important to next wire the nodes from the individual weapons into their respective keyframes. Adding some nodes in the melee microchip is not a bad idea. When wiring something into a keyframe that's in a timeline, it will only play if the playhead is over it and the wire is active, so that's why we're doing this. But this should be enough to get it to work. You can also do this for ADS, ADS recoil and reloading. Just make sure to run the relevant wires into the keyframes and to activate the relevant exclusive gates while animating. In the case of ADS, where we're not talking about a timeline but a standalone keyframe, you can use AND gates to only allow an ADS animation when pressing the ADS button and the relevant gun is active. Now of course, because we're never done, we can also activate melee while weapon swapping, which is a bug that needs to be fixed. We can do this by placing another NOT gate in the weapon swap chip that is wired into the NOT gate in the weapon swap animation timeline. This gate needs to be plugged into the end gate that defines the conditions that have to be met to allow the melee animation to play. Small tip, if you run out of ports eventually, which can definitely happen, just place a second end gate and make its output control the power of the first end gate. Now you can have infinite end gate ports. The melee might not be the only thing you need to turn off while swapping weapons though. Things like reloading and ADS are also things you should turn off while doing this. But those were more or less the basics of doing weapon swapping. Now imagine what kind of nightmare it was to do that for 4 weapons that were also able to be picked up and switched and you should slowly start getting an idea of why this is not a feature included with the template itself. But one last thing, how can we do 4 weapons that are mapped to the d-pad? Well it's quite easy actually. First we should add 2 more ports to the selector and then we need to wire all the d-pad buttons into them. They also need to be connected to the weapon swap timeline of course. A selector also kind of works like an exclusive gate, meaning it's impossible for two outputs to be active at the same time. This is why weapon swapping via the d-pad should immediately work now. That's really it. I hope this was useful, though I understand this might not be something you're interested in doing. Especially if you're new to Dreams, keeping it simple is definitely a recommendation I can make. With that, I thank you very much for watching and I'll see you around.